In the past 15 years, the UK economy has endured low growth, external shocks and self-inflicted crisis. Output per capita is lower now than it was in 2019, and we've fallen behind other competitors. Productivity is low, 11 million adults out of work, and housing is unaffordable. It's become a very familiar story. But is it a time to change all this doom and gloom? Did you know that the pound sterling has been the best performing major currency in the past 12 months? It has risen an impressive 10% since October 2022. Do foreign currency traders have some inside knowledge about the future UK economy? Or is it just another false dawn? Well, why has the pound sterling appreciated so much recently? Well, firstly, Brexit led to a 14% devaluation, and then the trust debacle left the pound relatively undervalued. So some of the pound's recent strength is merely recovering some of the lost ground. Secondly, UK interest rates have stayed higher for longer more than people expected. Now, this doesn't necessarily reflect economic strength. It reflects more the stubbornness of service sector inflation, which is still running close to 6%, mainly because of high wage growth. If core inflation had fallen quicker, the Bank of England would almost certainly have cut interest rates quicker too, and then the sterling would have been weaker. So this shows that you can't place too much emphasis on the strength of a pound in the short term. Stubborn inflation is a problem rather than strength. But the strength of sterling, at least in part, does reflect more positive trends. Markets have reacted favourably to the political stability. Uh, the new government's large majority, generally pro-business outlook, raises prospects of fewer crises than in recent uh, decade. After years of political upheaval, the UK looks relatively benign compared to countries like the United States and France, which face very narrow electoral battles. Also, the pound has strengthened because of a recent economic recovery and end to the recession, admittedly quite mild. Yet before we get carried away with talk of a recovery, the IMF recently forecast growth of only 0.7% this year and 1.5% in 2025. And this is nothing really to get excited about. Take out the effects of population growth and the UK is still forecast to be well below its usual trend rate of economic growth. So if we're trying to be optimistic about the UK economy, what else could we look to? Well, headline inflation has fallen to 2%, and with nominal wages still rising by around 4 or 5%, real wages are finally increasing after all that cost of living uh, problems. In the past few years, confidence has been very low, and this led to a rise in the savings ratio, as households put more savings aside for precautionary measures. However, the combination of falling inflation and real wage growth has seen consumer confidence rebound to the highest level since the end of lockdown. Now, if consumer spending starts to grow, this will provide an incentive for firms to invest and this can create the positive cycle of investment and growth the economy needs. In fact, low investment is rightly cited as a major factor behind the UK's low growth of recent years. Increasing investment is a major necessity to change the fortunes of the UK economy. Now, other factors that may increase investment in the coming months and years the government are reducing planning regulations and promoting investment like onshore wind, new solar power, new electricity pylons, even if it angers local constituencies. They are pledging to build one and a half million new homes in the next five years. To achieve this would require quite a stark turnaround in the fortunes of the UK home building sector, and if successful, it really would boost economic growth. Now that was a case for optimism, but unfortunately if we're trying to big up the UK economy, 
after that we start to struggle to find more good news. Now it, it is true that headline inflation has fallen and that's really quite welcome but it is at least partly due to a one-off fall in energy prices. In autumn forecasters predict a bounce in inflation. So secondly early indicators are that wage growth is starting to fall sharply so the current boon of high real wage growth may not last uh, that long. Also whilst some savers are definitely benefiting from this era of high real interest rates, the flip side is that many homeowners are facing moving on to much higher fixed rate mortgages, the amount spent on mortgage repayments has increased in recent months. And for those who are in the rented sector, their living standards have been really reduced by record levels in the cost of renting. It significantly affected their disposable income. So the current economy is benefiting some people, like savers, people have paid off their mortgage. But at the other end, those who are renting, those on benefits, or those with high mortgages, are facing continued cost of living pressures. Sterling's appreciation will mean little to someone trying to pay their rent. Also, I think that the recent profit warnings from companies like Ryanair give an insight into the actual spending of households and luxury items like foreign holidays. I think perhaps more importantly for the UK economy to really uh, bounce Phoenix-like from the ashes, the economy would need more than just some short-term good news. For example, there is a hope to build one and a half million new homes. But this ignores the inconvenient truth. The UK doesn't really have enough uh, builders and skilled workers. Now the UK probably won't be able to build anywhere near enough homes unless it perhaps falls back on encouraging more migration to fill those skills and vacancies. Home building has really gone down in recent months and it will take a huge effort to get anywhere close to the 300,000 target. And if there's a golden rule for government home building targets is that they very rarely get anywhere close and private home builders themselves are in no rush to meet government targets. They have their own profit margins to think about. Also the lack of skilled builders reflects a problem across the economy. A major cause of low growth has been a loss of people from the labour force. Inactivity due to sickness has risen to a record of 3 million people. And there's no easy fix for this. Another long-term problem for the UK economy is that of productivity. This is a key factor that determines long-term growth. And since 2010, there have been numerous forecasts that productivity would return to the pre-crisis levels of around 2-2.5%. Two, two but every one of these optimistic forecasts has proved to be inaccurate and productivity struggles to get anywhere close to just say 1%. And until this improves, there'll be no really strong economic recovery. Now, we could try to be optimistic and say that maybe there'll be an influx of new technology, artificial intelligence, better batteries, improved renewable energies, people wanting to work longer hours and be more entrepreneurial. But the really the recent story of productivity is that wishful thinking hasn't moved a dial. And that brings us on to another problem for the UK economy. The government is committed to a fiscal target of reducing debt over five years. Yet in practice, this means that many departments will face real austerity in the coming years. The Institute for Government states that uh, left behind departments like prisons and courts and child social care all face funding cuts of around 2.5% a year. But this is after years of neglect and growing problems like overcrowding of prisons. Even on investment, government fiscal rules have led to a fairly timid approach. As a share of GDP, public investment is set to fall in the coming years. So I have tried my best to be more optimistic about the UK economy, look for some positive signs. But it would be a mistake to put on rose-tinted spectacles. In some sense, there are reasons to be slightly more optimistic, or at least less pessimistic, we could say. The exit from a recession is a positive step. 
But for the UK to really transform itself, it's going to need a lot of long-term changes, which are hard to see, uh, at least in the uh, short term. But a good question to ask is why is the UK economy doing so much worse than, say, the United States? This video explains.